Greetings aliens, this is TJ, and you're watching Studio Sessions with Astro Noise. Today, we're here at my local skate park in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to bring you a little bit different of a video. So the idea behind it today is I'm gonna use this field recorder and just get some samples of me sessioning this park like I do every morning anyways, because uh, I love the way a skateboard sounds, the grinds, the pops, the screeching of the wheels even. So I'm gonna get some clips of that and then we're gonna head back to the studio and I'm gonna process it to get some weird sounding effects and get a little bit creative and see where we can go from there. So let's get some skating in and then we'll head back to the studio. Let's do it. Okay guys, here we are back in the studio. So the samples you just heard are the, the clips of me skating where the sounds came from the field recorder. So you already heard the raw sounds that I'm gonna be processing here and I'll just quickly go through uh, each one of them and kinda give you a little overview of what I did. But let's before that, let's just take a listen through of this song that I'm starting on and I'm gonna use these effects and I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and build out a whole track, but let's listen to what they sound like after all the processing and everything I did on all of them. And I don't know if you can see all these purple ones over here on the left. These are, besides the first two, the clap verb and the little sweep, those are just extras I added. But from the taps down, uh, these are all the skateboarding samples that I gathered. Uh, that you just now saw those clips. So all these right here once you see them playing you can kind of get an idea of what they sound like. So let's take a listen. Pretty cool, huh? So while I was building up the samples and everything just to for the video's sake, I was like, wow, this is turning out to be a pretty cool track. So like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and finish this one and make it a full track. But let's get started listening to each one of the samples. I'll give you a little overview, like I said, of what I did. Let's start off here with the taps, uh, that little clip at the end with me tapping my board in the middle of that little bowl section. So let's solo this. And I, I have all my effects running through my effects bus, which has the Valhalla Supermassive Reverb slash Delay effects thing. This is actually a free plugin. I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, and then I have, this is just a stock reverb. 
another little touch of a really long decaying reverb. Uh, this, like I said, is just stock with Pro Tools. And then uh, just a filter. Everything below 200 hertz because I didn't need any any low end on any of the samples. They were all kind of mid-rangey, kind of textury, crunchy type sounds. Anyways, let's take a listen with... Uh, I'll leave the bus effects on, but I'm going to turn off the effects that are on that track. And here's the taps. Right, so that's just the Valhalla and the other reverb that's making that spacey sound. But just going through, this one was pretty simple. It sounded pretty good on its own. Uh, just did, started off with EQ, EQ'd out all the very low end because I was outside recording and I got like, you know, kind of like the outside ambience noise. And I think maybe there was like a plane going overhead in this one that gives you that little kind of low rumble. Uh, and then just kind of filtered off the very top end because I didn't need any of that. And then I, this is also another free plugin. I'll link it as well. The Valhalla Freak Echo uh, just gave it a nice kind of like, just a, another good delay texture to it because the taps were really, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it, how I'm thinking. It's just, they're really mid-rangey and tappy and clicky. And uh, I wanted a lot of those little little clicks going on so I added this this uh, echo and it seemed to work pretty cool so um, here's without and as you can hear uh, or see I'm uh, I am automating the wet dry and the delay time of it so it kind of gave it a little bit of a more weird effect to it check it out Right, so we got that going on. Lo-fi, I love to add this to add harmonics. And sometimes when you record stuff with a field recorder, it doesn't have a lot of body to it. It's more of a thin uh, sounding recording, if you will, rather than my voice on say this AKG like condenser microphone. This is gonna have a lot more body than like a field recorder. So this plugin right here, the lo-fi is excellent to slap on. Uh, your field recordings just to give them more body and it's just a harmonic enhancer it's going to add more harmonics to the sound and any harmonic enhancer is going to work I didn't go too crazy just 0.9 added a little bit of white noise on top right and then another delay give it a little stereo field so that's the taps, moving on. This is, I did a bit more processing on this sample. This was the 50-50 grind to drop in where I'm kind of grinding on the, the coping at that skate park's got this crazy little cross, uh, these little X's in it. So when you grind over it, it makes this really like clicky sound. Uh, so let me turn all these off. I think I saved a sample at the end where I didn't affect it. There we go. Where I didn't chop it up, I mean. And this is what it sounds like. That's what I did. I believe, uh, yeah, I just pitch shifted it, pitch shifted it down. Uh, just like three semitones, maybe nothing too crazy. Then I kind of faded it in, it looks like. And let's go down the list of the plugins here. Went a little bit crazy with this <laughs> EQ. Uh, just cutting out the lows, adding a little bit more mids, and kind of cutting out, smoothing out the highs. I didn't want a lot of highs, but I just wanted to add that mid mid range crunch. Uh, this particular sound, I think it had a really ear piercing, like squeaky, high pitched noise uh, above like 5,500 hertz, 5,500 kilohertz, that is. Um, so. Yeah, I uh, this I just use a deesser in this case. I guess you could go with EQ, but I don't know. This worked. I don't really question it when I'm working with samples. I just move so quick. It's not the main focus of the track, so if it sounds good, just slap it in there and move on. Get on with your life. Uh, again, the lo-fi adding harmonics didn't go too crazy with it. Uh, 
did some more EQing to the lows, and again, those really shrill, high-pitched noises didn't quite like those. So let's actually turn these all off and take a listen to this one. Let's solo it. Right, so you can hear the kind of clickiness of those me grinding over those X's. Uh, but yeah, so here's with all of the plugins I've already mentioned on. Right, so I think it had like a little bit of a squeak from maybe my like uh, my trucks kind of squeaking or something. I'm not sure. Anyways, moving down, added a delay to it. Give it some stereo field. That's always nice. Uh, a little distortion over top of that delay. I love doing that just to add a little more presence to your delay. Um, so let's check that out. Right. Makes it a little bit, brings it up a little bit in the mix. Um, and, ooh, I added a filter suite to it. So it's starting off closed around 400 hertz. And then uh, I sweep it open. That's a pretty cool effect right there. Another distortion on top of that, just to give it, again, a little more presence in the mix. And then an EQ, just to be safe, EQ out the lows one last time, because if you add multiple instances of harmonic uh, excitement, distortion, or saturation, any type of stuff like that, uh, more than likely, it's gonna add a little bit of low end, and you wanna tame that especially if you're doing like effects and stuff you don't need a lot of low end in this it's just going to fight with your mix so this eq is just a little safety net eq'd below 300 hertz and i you know brought the input down a little bit because it was a little hot after all that distortion so yeah that's that one again pretty sweet okay this next one was at the beginning of the skateboard clips where I did just the axle stall and came back down. Uh, had some pretty cool clicky sounds in there. And this one, really, I think the sample, I just, you can see, I kind of just did some chops and uh, like, you know, made it kind of do like a stutter effect. And then uh, I also ran it through a delay and printed it. So you can see the left to right ping pong delay happening here. Uh, so those are the things that you can't see over here on the side on my plugin list, but I just, again, just chopped it and added like a little ping pong delay. And then again, went with some EQ first. Let's turn this off and listen to the chops and the ping pong delay first. And I didn't use the full sample. I just used some clicky parts of the axle stall, probably just like when my trucks like tapped down and kind of clicked onto the, the coping there. I thought it sounded pretty nice uh, just for a texture effect sound. But first up again, this uh, EQ. EQ not lows, add mids. Pretty basic. I just went with my ear, went real quick. If it sounded good, again, move on with your life. It's not the main focus of your track, so this will not make or break you. Do not focus too much time on this. It'll drive you crazy, and it's not worth it. Uh, some lo-fi. Pretty subtle again. And just a safety net EQ. Just EQ'd out some lows. Actually, on this Pro Q, which I highly recommend, this is not free. This is from Fab Filter. It's a paid EQ. Uh, I highly recommend, though, this is, and I'll go ahead and link this as well, but this is probably my favorite EQ to use. Uh, it's got a graph that shows, you know, what frequencies are going on. Right? So it's excellent. Uh, it's got, right here, I'm doing some side EQing. You can do a mid-side in here. You can do dynamic EQing. Excellent. I would definitely check this out. And that's what this little S is. I'm boosting just the side frequencies, not the mids, just to give it a little more width in the kind of the, you know, lower mid range right there around 700 hertz. Uh, yeah, that's what I got going on for the axle stall. Pretty cool little texture. Uh, next up. 
This is the screeching of the wheels when I did that kind of like backside power slide. Uh, so here's everything off. And this one, uh, don't, I think I just stretched it. I just, yeah, time stretched it. And then I use this plugin. It's in my audio suite for pitch shift. It's called Verify. And you can either take an audio sample and slow it down and it'll pitch down as it's slowing down or speed it up. So it'll start from a low pitch and, and gradually pitch itself up and speed up at the same time is what this is doing. So I did the speed up on it uh, and it's you'll hear it in a second. And I just time stretched it to kind of make it a little bit longer because the screech was real short uh, and I wanted it to last maybe like half a bar or something like that. So here's all the plugins over here off. And you can definitely hear the bit reduction because I pitch shifted it so much that, and it was so small that when you when you really stretch out a sample and pitch it too much, it gets that really kind of degraded, like eight bit, like video game type sound. I'm sure you've all heard, uh, but it works in techno and dance music stuff like that. So sometimes I don't like it. In this instance, it worked. So starting off, uh, just really filtered out everything below 500 hertz brought down the volume a little bit again lo-fi i added a lot of white noise on this one so here's without it here's with the white noise kind of wanted it to feel like a sweep and i used a filter on it so like a filter sweep type effect here's with the filter on Pretty cool, like a white noisy sound. Uh, just added some reverb over top of that. Uh, just like an ambient reverb. Nothing too big and crazy because again, it, all these are running through the group, my effects group with the big, uh, the super massive and the like a big church reverb on it as well. So I, I went kind of smaller with this reverb, this instance. And another lo-fi adding, again, more noise on top. Cool. So that one's mangled. That one you can't even recognize, which it works. I think it's pretty cool. So here's the uh, me crushing the beer can. There was a beer can out at the, the skate park. I guess someone was having a beer and they just left their trash there. I, I crushed it, but the beer can had like some ice in it. So it sounded weird when I crushed it. Uh, and yes, I threw it away. <laughs> Don't litter. But here's everything off, all the plugins over here. I didn't do any time stretching or anything on this one. It already sounded pretty cool and crunchy and textury. Right, so that already sounds pretty cool. Uh, this one again, cutting out lows, adding a little bit of mids, cutting off the very, very high frequencies. Don't need them. Some lo-fi. Added a bit more uh, distortion on this instance because it was real thin sounding again. So the lo-fi. Right. So it gives it a lot more presence and crunch. Uh added a good delay to it with I think I yeah added a lot of feedback on this one it's like 50% wet so it's it's a crazy like uh, dotted quarter delay give it some stereo field uh, and this is just a stock uh, Pro Tools delay just a little mono delay so it's gonna be the the H delay before it's going to give it the stereo effect and it so it doesn't matter if this is mono or not and it's just a different delay time to give it kind of a more than a dotted feel it it, it stack delays together experiment with that and see how it sounds this is the two stacked together again with it off Right, gives it more texture and just another safety EQ. Everything below 500 hertz didn't need it. Not in that sound, anyways. 
and this is the clip of me doing that front side air, the ollie on the, just on the, the quarter. Uh, here's everything off. Right, so that sounds pretty cool itself. You can just picture the pop and just landing it back in there. I love the sounds of skateboarding. I don't know about you guys, but leave it in the comments below. Do you guys love the sound of skateboarding? I, uh, I myself, I, I, I know I'm way better at music, but man, I love skateboarding. I just love the sounds of it. This has been a long time coming. I should have done this earlier, but anyways, here I am now. Uh, starting off. EQ. EQ and out lows, and you guessed it, adding some mids. Um, again, lo-fi, didn't go crazy. Added some compression to this one just to kind of even out the dynamics so everything is really audible because it was pretty thin, and I wanted, uh, there was some peaks in it that I didn't want to really make it, like, get distorted, add digital distortion, so... Basically, this is just catching those peaks and kind of even smoothing everything out because I, I did like the fastest attack it'll go. I didn't want any of the peaks popping through the compressor at all. Right. And this is not fab filter is not a free compressor. Again, though, highly recommend fab filter plugins. I'll, I'll just link the the pack that I bought from them in the description box. I highly recommend it. Excellent plugins. And again, uh, I went with the Pro Q3. This is just a safety net, just cutting off everything below 200 hertz. Nothing else going on in that one. Right. So this one was pretty cool. So th with this one, this is the clip of me sitting in the middle of that bowl. I was trying to get kind of a cool sounding reverbed uh vocal and this was just listen to it again i guess i'll turn these plugins off hello. right that's just me shouting hello from the middle of it but what i did was i took where am i at i took this sample and i don't know how you do it in your doll but i'll go through the steps i first i went to pitch shift i think i pitched it down like Oh yeah, it says right here, negative four and a half semitones, rendered it. And then uh, what I did for the reverb sound, because this is a reverse reverb, is basically what I did, what I used. I didn't even use the hello part. I just wanted the reverb from the voice. Um, so I pitched it down. I went back into my audio suite. I got a reverb and just made it to infinity and just recorded out like a... A big chunk of time and then I just took a piece of that reverb tail and then at the beginning just reversed it so yeah that's that's what this is right here and here's with everything off right it's just a reverb tail so I just cut the end of the reverb tail after I printed it with uh, like a big haul, or I think I used a plate on Infinity, and I just uh, took the tail of that after the hello, like after the the decay and everything. I just cut a piece of that tail, and it was super long because I turned the decay all the way up, uh, and then just reversed it, added some EQ, just cutting out super lows, uh, and then get out of here. Just added another reverb on top so that when it stops, there's another tail dying down as well. So it wouldn't just stop to stop abruptly. Um, here it is. Everything on. Right. Thought that was pretty cool myself. So last up here is the clip of me doing the slash grind, the front side slash where my back trucks just kind of grind over the coping and again that coping's got really good like x's in it so you get a really good kind of crunchy really textured sounding grind uh let me turn everything off and this one i believe what i did was here's the part i don't know if i zoom in let me turn it on slip 
if I zoom in here, you can, here's the part you can see where I'm grinding over the little hash marks on the coping, the tick, 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 tick. Um, but leading up to it are, are like my wheels going up the ramp and then my wheels going down the ramp. So what I did with the beginning part is I used that verify with a, the pitch speed sweep up. I did that at the beginning and then I swept down. Uh, so let's listen to it with all the plugins off and it's like, it's like pitching up, grind, and then pitching down. Let's check out what that sounds like. Right? So I thought that sounded pretty cool. I love the texture, the sound of that, that coping. Sounds excellent. Feels excellent when you grind on it too. Uh, so the EQ is cutting off everything below 300 hertz, adding again some mids, and I added some, I boosted the highs above 400 or 4,000 kilohertz on this one uh, just to give it more presence and air. That's what I felt like it needed. I added some distortion. I went with the, the wrap is the, the craziest setting on this. This is a stock plugin for Pro Tools. And the rap is the most present and gritty sound, and I, I kind of went kind of crazy with it, added quite a bit. So that's with, let's listen to it with it on. Here's off. Right, so I added a good amount of presence. Uh, this is where the craziness of this sound comes in. I did like a, a delay with a really fast, uh, really fast delay, like, way faster than like a quarter and all that, 164th. Um, added a crazy amount of feedback and made it almost 50% wet. So here's what the delay on. It almost gives it like a slap back type of feel. I thought that was excellent when I added that in because it took it from, okay, cool, to whoa, what was that sound? And then some lo-fi adding some presence, added a bit more uh, than I did in the rest of them. Uh, and then a little bit of white noise. Again, this is just adding presence. Any kind of harmonic exciter is going to do the trick for you. So that is all the effects. And yeah, so I hope you guys got some inspiration from this because sometimes making music you get in ruts and you're just so used to doing the same thing over and over and over and there's nothing wrong with that. It gets the job done and when you're new, you definitely just gotta put in your reps. Don't worry too much about being, oh, this has gotta be the most creative song, every song. You just gotta get in your reps and learn your tools, the tools of the trade first. And uh, But don't, don't be afraid to get creative in certain aspects, but um, it's nice to get outside of the box sometimes because most of us electronic producers produce inside the box. So pick you up a field recorder. These things, uh, let me see what this one is. This is a Zoom H4N handy recorder. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find them all like some good ones for under a hundred bucks and it's just something good that you can carry around with you and record some stuff outside so you're not just you're getting organic sounds it adds a good texture adds some flair uh definitely sounds techno uh because <laughs> it's very just earthy sounding and just like people won't know what the sounds are when you get them but hopefully that inspires you hopefully you guys like the track hopefully you learn something hopefully you guys like techno if you guys have any other questions about music production, the process, anything you've seen, you want it talked about in more detail, contact me, TJ Janay. You can find me on social media. That's G-E-N-A-Y is my last name. Uh, or you can just look me up, our Astro Noise, uh, Facebook, Instagram, message me on there. I will reply, comment on this video, on this YouTube video. That would be nice. Um, and let me know. I'll make a video. Until next time, make some music. Peace.